So we're going to talk a little bit about the issue of housing, because the lack of affordable housing is a huge concern for both low-income and middle-income working families. And there seems to be different approaches to address this problem. One approach is to build more housing, to increase the supply so that prices can come down. Another approach is to protect the remaining stock of affordable housing from the displacement that gets created by high-end development. So I want to go back to, to David Chu. You've supported three very large projects, the shipyards, Park Merced, Treasure Island development. This indicates that you support the first approach, that we can build uh, our way out of this problem. Is that accurate, and if so, what? I believe that we need to do both. We need to make sure we're building new housing, which is why I was proud to be the swing vote to make the Hunters Point project move forward, which Mayor Lee said will create 10,500 units of new housing, and the highest rate of affordable housing of any of these types of projects. This is why I supported Park Merced on the west side of town, Treasure Island on the east side of town. But I will also say that as a tenant, as someone who's been standing up for tenants, as someone who has helped to craft legislation to improve and increase affordable housing for seniors, for homeless veterans, to increase low income home ownership opportunities, we need to make sure we're protecting our current housing stock, particularly here in Chinatown in the northeast part of the cities. And this is why I'm proud that my legislative record is about standing up for tenants and standing up for our housing stock and making sure that everyone who currently lives in San Francisco gets to continue to live in San Francisco. John Avalos, in contrast, you cast uh, several votes against both the Hunters Point Shipyards and Park Merced projects at different times. Do you think these projects will make the situation of uh, affordable housing for working families uh, worse, not better? I actually had voted against the um, approving the EIR the environmental review document for the Hunters Point Shipyard, but I did vote in favor of the project, and I voted in favor of the project because of the high levels of affordability that were, were there. I, I wish they could have been higher, though, uh, and about other jobs that were going to be there as well. I voted against Park Merced. Uh, that one I did vote against the project itself because it was going to demolish about 1,700 units of sound housing. Uh, neighborhoods would be leveled, and I, 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 my record is protecting tenants. I'm endorsed by the Tenants Union. I've had a strong record of working with uh, groups like Chinatown Community Development Corporation to protect tenants through this, through the SRO Collaborative and, and bring restoring cuts there that Gavin Newsom has made year after year. Uh, this year, uh, thanks to Mayor Ed Lee, the, those cuts were not made. Uh, I want to make sure we're protecting tenants more in San Francisco. So Jeff Adachi, you've been serving as the public defender, and so the issue of housing is not something that many in the community know your positions on. Maybe you could describe your approach. Thank you. Something I do know about is poverty. 12% of San Franciscans are living below the federal poverty level. That includes children and families. I see the ravages of the lack of housing in our community. I see homeless families. I see uh, you know, people who have once had jobs and thriving careers on the street. And this is a serious problem that we have to address. You can talk about building market rate housing and having a little bit more affordable housing, but it's not going to change the basic numbers. Here are the numbers. We are building housing for the very, very wealthy at over 120%. We are building housing for the middle class at 21%. We are building housing, affordable housing at 80%. So Jeff, maybe you can get to, so how would you address it? How would you solve that problem? Two things. In terms of housing for the poor, in my first four years, I would create 10,000 units of public-private housing. And this is something that is already being done. There are uh, about six buildings now uh, that are creating uh, housing in this way. And it's something that costs very little and could be encouraged by a tax uh, credit uh, for for the uh, the uh, apartment owners. I would also look at having a moratorium on building ho housing uh, for the wealthy because we need to look at building housing for low income and middle class San Franciscans. Thank you, Tony Hall. Uh, Jeff suggests a moratorium on on building housing for people who. I imagine make over a certain amount of money, would you support that? And maybe you can also talk about your position on the Treasure Island 
I've developed it because I know you've spoken out about that question. First of all, I wouldn't restrict any, any type of housing for anybody. And I believe your community out there needs housing, values education, values small business. So I would support all three of those things. I'm glad you asked the, the uh, question about Treasure Island. As the director out there, I took that project over after being asked by Gavin Newsom six times to take it over because of my history in developing projects. I wasn't out there two months and I was asked to give the contracts to develop that island exclusively to his highest political donors. And I said no. And that's the one thing I'm most proud of in my 35 years of service, standing up with the status quo and the crooks that are running this town. As far as Parker said goes, I'm pro-development. I did not support that project, again, because you're going to have 1,900 tenants relocated with no guarantees. That was a lobbyist special, folks, and it's time you woke up to who's running the city. And the last part is what would I do to promote housing? Well, I actually kind of want to keep moving a little bit because okay. you raised some important questions. Uh, so for Teresa Baum, um, you know, Tony Hall suggests that there's many different financial motivations for the various stakeholders in big development developers, contractors, construction, construction trades. Now, what should the public know about what goes behind um, the scenes with some of this big development? Well, the public should know exactly uh, who those contractors have donated to. And uh, the public should, should there should be, in, in, for example, uh, many uh, contractors with big uh, made very large donations to Ed Lee's, to the Run Ed Run campaign, which was encouraging Ed Lee to run, donations in the thousands of dollars. So if any of those contractors are involved in things, uh, they get contracts from Ed Lee. If he's elected mayor, then people should know that they had given donations to him of five, seven, ten thousand dollars $10,000 to encourage him to run for mayor. Thank you. Uh, Ed Lee, would you like to respond, and then I'll have a follow-up question. Not having been part of the uh, campaign that uh, the candidate referred to, I, I have an ability to respond to that. But I will say this. On the subject of housing, I have been helping to lead this effort because the future of our housing is not just invested in private investment. It's the public-private relationship that has to be carefully guided. That's why I fought so hard to save redevelopment from being eliminated by the state. It's the relationship that we have to have where people are going to be able to build affordable housing integrated with market rate housing. That's the future here, and that's what we're planning for Ping Yun. When we look at the aged housing there, it's going to have to be public-private. Uh, that's what we've done in Hunters Point, and that's how we're going to do Alice Griffin. That's how we won this national competition of $30.5 million infusion to Alice Griffin, because we did it the right way, and we did it in a public-private partnership. You know, Ed, oftentimes uh, the city uses zoning uh, to help control or limit development, and it also requires developers to replace housing that they've developed, um, or that they've, that they've developed replacement housing if they're going to um, reduce the affordable housing stock. Do you agree with both of those strategies? Yes, I do. Again, it's not the sole strategy, but it's one of them. And you have to have some uh, zoning incentives for people who want to exceed, for example, the height limits and build more housing. We want them to pay more into the housing. But if we agree that that's a good thing, sometimes the zoning is there for a great purpose, not to shadow open space or, or destroy other people's views. And that has to be balanced. There is always a balancing mechanism through our city planning process that carefully allows residents to weigh in as to what's a good development and what is one that has negative impact. Thank you. 